All right, everybody, it's uh, MLB Now Home Edition. Uh, we are pleased to be joined right now by Hall of Fame honoree, one of the all-time greats, and our good friend Jason Stark. Jason, great to have you back on the show. Ryan, great to be back. Great to talk to you again. And Jason, you are here for a reason, not just because right. we like you and you're a great baseball historian, but I want to run something by you. I have a thought exercise. I have a little time on my hands. I don't know about you, but uh, so we'll get, I got to run through this thought exercise. Actually, it started when uh, Joel Sherman's father said something to the effect of, if I had an all-time team, you have to have Pete Rose in his 4,000 hits. And it just sparked in my head, yeah, if you had an all-time team, a real-world team that was playing out on the field, not just the all-time great career war leader team, but an all-time great team, I think I want Pete Rose on that team, like the physical Pete Rose and the drive and energy and all of it. And the, even the clubhouse chemistry that he was, he was a rough player, but he was a popular player. His teammates loved him. Players that played for him loved him. So that sort of thing. So Jason, how about this? Is, do you think it's possible to construct an all-time team of winners that might not be the all-time greatest team? Of course, but can I ask a question? What yeah. show is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is MLB now, right? We have entered an alternative universe, Brian. Exactly. Like, are, it's, are you it's now a, in the clutchiness over like woba ness I'm. I'm. We're, I think this is post sabermetric now, Jason. Since okay. we can all, uh, we all kind of agree on the numbers of production, and we all kind of agree on that. So we can agree that like Gehrig, Rogers, Hornsby, Mike Schmidt, like Johnny Bench, these are the greatest players ever. We can go by war. We can do lots of other things. But I would recognize, and I tell you, a lot of the ex-players that we work with at MLB Network have had a great influence on me and being around baseball people and, and being around even you know, people like you through the years. There's something, right? There is something to the social dynamics. There's something to how players get along to maximize production. And there's something to players who do repeat their process better in the biggest moments. And if that's clutch, that's clutch. Some guys demonstrate that. I'm, I'm saying yes. There is something to that. It's not nothing. It's something. It, it's absolutely something. I, there, when you're trying to evaluate greatness, at least when I am, um, I, I'm definitely trying to look at who loves the moment, who has demonstrated that love of the moment. Uh, clearly, there are players who do that who would not be on your your list of the all-time greatest players. The question is, do you want them on your team over those greatest players. That, that's a really hard exercise. That is tough. And then there are players like Lou Brock, Paul Molitor, who did exactly what you said. They crushed it in the World Series, but it's a relatively small sample. But it looked like they were doing a repeatable skill. Um, and then there are others that, like Willie Mays, for example, was not great in the playoffs. Obviously an all-time great player. All right, let me set this up, Jason. Again, I'm glad you are, you're here. I wanted to run this by you and see what you had to say. Here, just so people know, here is what, the, like, the live ball all-time team. These are the war leaders uh, of all time. So this is the greatest team, not my team, but the team that you would say, all right, here's the greatest team of all time. And uh, I'll just, you see Johnny Bench behind the plate. Uh, Ted Williams is the best hitter that didn't make the team, so he's the DH. That's easy. Uh, Lou Gehrig at first, Rogers Hornsby at second, A-Rod at short, Mike Schmidt at third, and in the outfield, Willie Mays in center, Babe Ruth, best player of all times in right, and in left field, it's Barry Bonds. Here now, to contrast against that team, I only have one carryover. I almost had two, but I had one carryover into my all-time winner's team. And Jason, you can have a shot at it, okay? Behind the plate, Yogi Berra. Carl Yastrzemski is my DH, super clutch. Lou Gehrig is about the perfect player, a winner and uh, the all-time best player at his position. Second base is brutally tough, Jackie Robinson. I think I want Jackie Robinson and Pete Rose on my team, on the same team, driving that club through six months and three tiers of playoffs because Robinson and Pete Rose can also both play five positions. And we know they are, they have relentless drive. Then George Brett, very close over Brooks Robinson. Derek Jeter, very close over Cal Ripken Jr. In the outfield, I want Ricky Henderson. I, I want a leadoff guy. I'm putting together a real team. I want a leadoff guy. And the ultimate winner is Joe DiMaggio in center field. Uh, and also, I'm taking clubhouse chemistry, and you love this, clubhouse chemistry, into account in that I have a very stable core of Berra, Gehrig, uh, and Jeter. 
that that is that, that those are the core calm presence on the team and that way DiMaggio can be revered Rose and Robinson will bust guys up on the field you don't want everybody doing that George Brett is very volatile but you have a solid core of calmness of sin that is the team in the middle of all of this chaos that is the team Jason I want to go to war with you tell me hey well hey I it's hard to not like your team, even though you, you've used the word chemistry like seven times already. In the <laughs> <laughs> my, here's my first question. Pete Rose over Babe Ruth? Babe Ruth's well, not a winner? <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, I, now, for the purposes of this exercise, I'm getting rid of Babe Ruth. I'm just tired of it. I'm just, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes, right. Ruth is You're not eligible. Oh, I'm ruling him ineligible. Wait a second. I'll say this. They were had a 1,200 career OPS in the World Series and had an ERA under one as a pitcher. All right, if you want Babe Ruth, but I'll, I'll find room for him. But I'm saying Ruth also disappeared some seasons, if you notice. Like, sometimes he just goes away. So I'm ruling him ineligible. He's obviously the greatest player of all time. He was super clutch as a pitcher and a batter. I'm just tired of it. So I'm put, yes. Pete Rose, though, and I, I, I'm not saying I'm right. Hank Aaron performed beautifully in the playoffs he was a world series stud and is an all-around player a lot of people think he's just a home run hitter now he's, he wasn't so I, I could be here's my second team just so you know how close certain guys were i had stan musial frankie frisch cal ripkin brooks robinson johnny bench hank aaron willie mays even though he struggled in the playoffs yes he was wpa top five i think 15 different years frank robinson another ultimate winner and paul molitor is my designated hitter i have a question for you uh, jason here's where i need help Second yeah. base, second base is brutal. Eddie Collins, Roberto Alomar, Frankie Frisch are the type of guys who will go through a wall for you and actually had much better World Series and playoff runs than Jackie Robinson. Um, also, Rogers Hornsby is the best hitter. And Joe Morgan is probably like the best player and the guy you want to go to war with, but he didn't have good playoff stats. He just he had, he had plenty of run with the big red machine, not just later. Who should be at second base? Now, when I try to consider my all-winner team, I decided I didn't want to go back 80 years or 90 years. I wanted to go back to guys who at least played in my lifetime. And so I think Robbie Alomar is a great choice. Didn't just have great numbers in the postseason. Had some amazing moments in the postseason. The, the homer against Eckersley still gives me chills. I was there that day. The guy that I actually picked at second, was I had to put one Philly guy on here, right? I went Chase Utley. I mean, Chase had over a thousand OPS in his three World Series. He had that one World Series against the Yankees, hit five homers. And in Philadelphia, he's got a play named after him, right? The Utley play, the, the fake to first, throw the runner out at home, late innings, that clinching game. So, I mean, there's no wrong answers here, but I, I would go more modern. So I think Utley Alomar for me. Yeah, you could be right. Utley is – Utley might – I almost have recency bias where I'm think. well, I'll say this because Utley's the – I think Utley's a Hall of Famer, Jason. I think he's a, a, a flat-out winner, right? I'm speaking all this vague sports writer nonsense. I've railed against him. <laughs> but I'll say that just to jar people. Utley's a flat-out winner, super efficient on the bases, hit for power. During his peak, he was the second-best player in the game to Albert Pujols. He was a monster, and he hit good pitching, hit for power. He was just a, a, a – and his, his defensive run saved. He averaged like plus 17 over an eight-year period. He was a superstar. But for some reason, I go back to Frankie Frisch. That's why he made my second team. And Jackie Robinson's an old-timer too. But Robinson, we didn't see the best of Robinson. He broke in at age 28. And I think given his football, basketball, and track skills, if you made him just a baseball player and he didn't have to deal with virulent racism on a daily minute-to-minute -minute basis, uh, he'd be – an even better player. And Frankie Frisch, here's one of, here's a chemistry and clutchiness, you know, uh, sort of conundrum. I don't think it's an accident that Frankie Frisch won four pennants, right, with his first team, with the Giants, then got traded for Hornsby, goes to the Cardinals, wins four more pennants and two more World Series titles. He won eight pennants and four World Series, and he managed one of them, the Gas House Gang, I'm not thinking that just happened because he got lucky. You know what I'm saying, Jason? <laughs> no coincidences in baseball. I didn't <laughs> cover Frankie Frisch, so I'm not, I, I can't vouch for that, but you make an excellent case for him. I, I mean, I'd love to, to look at some of the differences between our team. I, like, 
I, I think you've got the wrong Yankee center field legend, in, right? I've got Mantle over DiMaggio, way better October resume. Right? I think you've got the wrong Red Sox DH. Ortiz over oh, the I'm Sweet. sorry. Uh, that's one thing that surprised me, Jason. Yastrzemski crushes David Ortiz. Yastrzemski is flat out better. WPA in the regular season and WPA in the postseason. His win probability added. He was much clutcher. I know I didn't believe it either because but Big Poppy is the most frightening person I've ever seen in the postseason. Yastrzemski <laughs> crushes him. He crushes him. Uh, the sample size is a lot different. Plus, David Ortiz won four World Series. I hate to ask a painful Red Sox question, but how many World Series did Yaz win again? Okay. I know, and he had like a, what, a 1,500 OPS. <laughs> the old winner World team. Series. What do you want from him? But yeah, okay. All right. I get it. No, with, now, see, that's an example. With Ortiz, it was a repeatable skill. I'm giving you that. It's just that I saw, like, Carl Yastrzemski just do better in the clutch and win a pennant basically by himself. As for Mantle, he got hurt a lot and checked out a lot you know, and was kind of in and out, which, you know, was kind of part of his process. Now, DiMaggio had injuries as well, but in his peak, DiMaggio with his base running and also the way he was revered by his team makes a difference. All right. I know you want to poke holes in that and good. I like being on the other side of this for once. <laughs> <laughs> I can, and you can, yeah, I can tell you, dude. With your fancy, as Medo would say, with your cockamamie statistics. Uh, like <laughs> Jason, here's something that I think is right up your alley. Uh, this is called The Vault, and uh, people can vote on MLB.com until May 1st. You can put in your prediction on basically what's going to be the all-decade team for this decade, 2020 to 2029. You can make predictions on who will lead Major League Baseball in nine statistical categories, MLB.com slash vault, and you can go to that link to check out the categories, too. I'll say it again and this time correctly, MLB.com slash vault that's the all decade team for next decade jason good luck with that I right, picked jason. The team. <laughs> jason we'll do it again and thanks for your input and i yeah i'll um and you might swing me toward chase utley i'll see but frish all right i've got some time i've got a couple of hours on my hands now i'll work on it. yeah you thanks, do that. we'll see you next time